Hello there and welcome to another video by the MXQ project. So this video is going to be totally different to what we've done before and it's um, it's going to be interesting to see what you guys think of this video. So as you can see I've got an MXQ Pro that's sat here and this actually just arrived today and I'm quite excited to play around with this. We've got a number of different videos coming up about what this can do such as LibreLeck and we on a few other systems. The processor inside these boxes is pretty beefy. It's an S905 Amlogic processor, also known as a system on a chip. <laughs> I should really say that. But um, anyway, so that's going to be interesting. But this video, we're not going to cover this. So what we're going to cover is the plug that came with it. Now these plugs are a pain in my bottom. They really are because they are not legal in this country. I have got something here called an Electrical Safety First UK Plug Checker. Now if you want one of these, I recommend you go and grab one because it's they come in useful to these sorts of situations. You can go and grab one from electricalsafetyfirst.org.uk. I'll leave the link in the description. Now what this allows me to do is check whether this plug meets the UK standard. So the first test we're going to do is this test here and we're going to test whether these three pins can fit through these three holes. So these three pins here. So let's have a go shall we? Let's see if it does it. So what should happen when I put it through is that it slides nicely into the three holes with no resistance. And yeah it's pretty smooth, there is a bit of resistance there. It, it, I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, but there's a bit of resistance there, you know, but you know, it's it's pretty much there. So this red bit here, just here. Now this should be covered up totally when I when I put the plug on it. Now, yeah, it pretty much covers the whole of the plug, but just in the corner there, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it slightly exposes a bit of the red. So it kind of fails, I'm afraid, on that bit. But it's almost there. So the last check we need to check is the pin width and length. So these are the two two live pins just here, live and and we need to check whether it, these are long enough. So we can just apply it just on there and we can see. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up properly or not. But yeah, it's just about long enough. And it's just Slightly too thin, ever so slightly too thin. So the earth pin, it's not actually an earth pin really, it's just a piece of plastic because it doesn't need to be earthed. But if we, if we put it on there just to check, and that that is actually that is actually the right size, just about. So. Why do we need the size of the pins to be right? Well, if you put that into your plug socket and it's too thin, well, it's not gonna make contact with the positive and negative um, terminals properly. And that could cause overheating and arcing and all sorts of things that could cause you a lot of problems. By checking the size of these pins, you can tell whether it's gonna go into your plug socket properly. And unfortunately, if they're too thin, or even too thick, it could either cause the arcing and cause the overheating, or it might just cause damage to your plug socket. And, well, who knows what will happen over time with your plug socket, with it being damaged that way. Now, unfortunately, this plug has failed on those points because it's not quite there with the sizing and, and it's not covering up the red section. Because that red section there is to protect you from getting an electrical, electrical shock when you're taking the plug in and out of the socket. Finally, we've got this label here. And it's got all the information about what the plug does and it's rain. This plug fails straight away because it does not have the manufacturer's name or logo or address or anything on this plug. Now... If, for example, I had it in the manual, which I've got just here, it would be fine, but it doesn't. There's nothing in this manual 
tells me any information about who made this plug or anything like that. So yeah, it's failed. Just chuck it in the bin. There's no risk. Don't take the risk. Chuck this in the bin and go and get a proper one from, in the UK, say Maplins or any good electronic store, wherever you are in the world, and just replace it. This connection here is very standard and it'll be, it'll be very easy to get a new one and I won't worry too much about that. Just, just don't take the risk. Now, moving on to another plug that I've had for, well, it's been a few weeks now and I got this with another device that I've been using. And this is, is a travel adapter for the UK. Now it came with this plug here, which is a European plug. Now the reason it came is because obviously I can't use this, so I need a, an adapter of some sort. Obviously they didn't have the right um, USB plug sockets in stock, so they just fired one of these in so I could use it. But this does not meet any standard at all, and I would consider this to be dangerous. If you've got one of these plugs that looks like this, there's also a white variation, which is like white smooth on the top. Chuck it out, okay? Do not risk using this thing because it is dangerous. I promise you that. The reason well, number one, when you plug this thing into it, it doesn't quite fit it properly. Now ignore that coming out of the thing because I've got this screw off it, but that doesn't fit into it properly. Second of all, because this is a, a travel adapter and it doesn't and it comes under a different ruling set by the UK, these should have sh shutters on the actual pins pin sockets here. Now that's to protect you from sticking your finger in or a kid sticking your finger in. That's why in the UK all plug sockets have got the shutters designed to keep fingers out. Now if we test it against our electrical safety plug checker, there's a lot of, quite a bit of resistance when putting that in, so that tells me that these these pins are not properly placed. As well as that, if we put this in, you can probably see on the camera. All that red part is exposed. So if a little kid went to pull this out the plug, they could very easily touch these pins while they're pulling it out. And you know, if you think I'm just scaremongering, I'm really not. Okay, this is a really important point because the reason we have these laws in place is to stop people blowing themselves up or killing themselves or whatever. Now, I've taken this plug apart and inside there's no fuse. This should have a fuse. This should be a fuse plug travel adapter. And there's nothing. If there was a fault or something were to happen with this plug inside, but these two would maybe touch each other and short out, this plug would melt or catch fire. If you've got one of these plugs, I'm going to say this again, chuck it out. Okay, don't take the risk. Chuck it out and go and find a good quality replacement, all right? Just don't bother with it, because it's a load of crap. If you were a business, for example, importing hundreds of these boxes, thousands of these boxes, trading standards will take them off you and they will destroy them. And that is a guarantee, okay? Take that from my personal experience with this, all right? They will not separate the plugs, they will not care about it, they will destroy everything, all right? And yeah, two right two, because these should not be in the UK. This shouldn't be anywhere, all right? This should not have been made. Whoever designed and made this plug is an idiot, all right? Absolute idiot, because it is, it is dangerous. So I think that concludes my little rant today. So thank you for watching, and we shall see you in another one.